Ladies and gentlemen, for the welcome address, I'd like to invite Mr. Gabriel Aduda, the Permanent Secretary of Political and Economic Affairs Office of the Secretary of the Government of the Federation. Please let's put your hands together for him as he comes forward. Continue to put your hands together, please, as he comes forward. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so very much. Let me start by conveying a very warm welcome of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, to every single one of us here gathered this morning. As you know, today is Wednesday, and on Sunday will be at the council meeting, after which they have a rally to attend down south. So it's a very, very busy day for them, just as you know that the political uh, timetable is beginning to tick, and therefore activities are heating up. Uh, so please uh, kindly accept his very warm regards for everyone here. He really will have desires to be here because indeed he's a man of the people. And as you know, it is the grassroots politics that actually politics. Having said that, let me once again congratulate you all for making it out here this morning. And signing promotions for their tenacity, especially Engineer Kayobe. Please, thank you very, very much. I will tell you that even for his tenacity, his commitment, his push, his drive, I will not have been able to pull this through. So Engineer Kayobe, thank you so very much. Uh, having said that, it is not a morning for too much of talk and speeches, but the truth of the matter is that the local government is a very, very important arm of government, a tier of government, that we need to pay more attention to as a country. To a large extent, we cannot in any way or form talk about inclusive growth if the local government are not given their rightful place the affairs of things in governance. It is, thank you, it is the closest tier of government that actually, not, not only is it close to the people, that actually dwells with the people. And we feel that if we must pay attention to inclusive growth, which is basically about ensuring that the needs, the wants, and the desires, the aims and aspirations of the people are taken into consideration by those in governance, then the first place to begin to pay this attention is at the local government level. That is where you hear what the people want. That is where you are able to feel the pulse of the people. That is where even most of the votes during elections come from. So we need to pay a lot of attention to the local government. But we're not unaware that the system has been bedeviled with quite a number of challenges, starting from financial autonomy, which we all know that even the government at the federal level has been fighting for, encouraging, and hoping that we'll be able to attain. But we also understand that the federal system we run gives autonomy to the various years of government. And how that autonomy, to a large extent, is wielded and put brought, brought to bear in the affairs of governance is largely dependent on those at the state level and then down there at the local government level. Some states are pushing hard to do it right, some have not gotten it right, some are still driving. It all depends on where you find yourself. But I also believe that the local government has a lot of uh, role to play in how seriously the local government is taken. It is not enough for you to just sit back and wait to be given. The question is, what are you doing at your level to improve the process? What are you doing at your level to be recognized? Because if you do not take steps to seek recognition for yourself, it becomes very easy for you to be drumming down and be rolled over. So we need to begin to work from that perspective. And there is so much power that you will that the local government is not aware of. How much are we able to galvanize our people? How much are we able to say, look, 
before X, Y, and Z comes into office, we need to sit down and negotiate a position. Because when push comes to shove, it's a game of numbers. And when the game of numbers is actually brought to bear, who will we give this force? It matters a lot. Because from the people you select, that, is, that determines the kind of governance that you have at the end of the day. Nigeria today is suffering some of its ills simply because the local governments have not been given their rightful place. If the local government were given its rightful place, trust me, Boko Haram will not have been an issue like it turned out. Why? Because at that level, we get to know who is your neighbor. And if the local government were functioning well and meeting the needs of the people, and the people are happy with the little they get from government, at that level, you will realize that community policing becomes, uh, I mean, it, it becomes a natural issue. Where you sit and you see a face in the crowd that you do not understand, you are able to ask questions. Okay? What happened to our traditions in the past? Everybody's child is becoming, I mean, a child is becoming of everybody's child. But we're beginning to lose it because we are taking attention away from communities and we're putting it back at the federal level where we just come share and everybody disappears. Nobody really needs to know anybody. Nobody really needs to want to know who his neighbor is. But we need to get back to that level. If you look at the developed world today, yes, we talk about technology, they are very advanced, which also has its advantages, but what works for them mostly is the community spirit. In the United States, for example, when you move into a new neighborhood, trust me, your neighbor doesn't understand you're going out to come in. All he does is keep his phone, his phone, call that one and report to the police and look, there's a new face here and I don't understand. But when last did anybody in your local government call you, call the local traditional ruler or the chief to say, look, there's something happening in my pocket that I'm not aware of? No! And then you realize that the people that live in such a few that are in the north and the south of my river are people that belong to the communities. Faces you see every day where you do not know have tendencies on the other side. If we empower the local government, what we are doing by and large is empowering the communities. And by empowering the communities, you are empowering the people to be able to take their destinies into their hands. And that way they can be able to arrest these issues and meet them in the board before they become a problem for everyone else. So I believe that we need to really, really pay attention uh, to local government. Of course, the social protection framework, government has done a lot, puts together so many programs. The Agro program, the social investment program, NYSHA is running quite a number of them, name them. The truth of the matter is that we cannot effectively reach the targeted population if the local governments are not given their right to this. So you find that the government comes out with quite lofty ideas and ideas and programs. But at the end of the day, the implementation is marred because we are not able to reach those that those programs were initially intended for. And therefore, it gives room for all forms of manipulation at the top and what have you. Even the structure, how many states actually have effective, functional structures that work in synergy between the state and the local government. Some have just become a name. You are commissioner for local government. So what? When last did you visit one? When last did you visit? What is your relationship with the various local government chairmen? Can we say it's cordial? Can we say that when you sit down at council meetings in your state, that you actually take to mind the things that bother the local government? Or is it just another position that you have been given into party patronage and so you just sit there as a commissioner, but without impact in the lives of the local governments? These are issues that we need to pay attention to. And local government chairman, if you are representatives that here at all, I need you to know that you owe a right to hold these people accountable. Don't just sit back and be afraid that you won't get your subvention. In the end, what do you really get anyway? Some states have become a lot of master to themselves. When it comes to local government financing, the governor decides. I was doing some work for the European Union in the state south south. And uh, we realized that some specific road projects were supposed to be done, 
which was fully reflected in the budget, and it was described as a joint project between the state and the local government. The state was to give a percentage funding, and the local government, all the local governments in that state, were also to give a percentage funding to get some specific kilometers of roads through that year. And what we realized was that while the state was going down on its own path, the funding that was supposed to come from local government was deducted from such by the state. So at the end of the day, these funds were taken in the name of the local government without giving them even the choice of desiring or saying where they wanted the roads to be. And so when we decided to go and see these roads one after the other, we will only count a thousand and yes, the money was up. We see this every other day. The truth of the matter is that the local government is not powerless. It is not powerless. We are not indicting any states. We are not indicting any local government. We are simply saying that we need to wake up from our slumber. You need to show relevance. You need to show relevance. You need to place the demand on the people you have appointed into government to do what is right at your level. It is not enough for you to just gather at the end of the month like the palace and that, that is a popular belief. Share what the salary is and then go back again and gather next month. No. You are the face of government that people see. You will be shocked that in some localities they may never see the governor of the state, but they know who the local government chairman is. So we need to understand the power we will for being that close to the people and see how we can bring this power to bear in running the affairs of the state. For social protection programs to succeed, we need the prompt, effective collaboration of local governments. So please, we need to see you more. Recently, we gathered to discuss the social investment program, the Anko Boras program, and a number of others. Our local government was not represented. We have states represented them. And we're wondering if what we do is have a unit in the state government's office to run these affairs, how does it trickle down to the people down there? There is need for us to institutionalize. And you cannot institutionalize federal programs or interventions at the state level and leave out the local government uh, areas. You can't. That sphere of government has to be carried along. So we need to think. And I am hoping that as you sit down for these two days to deliberate on issues, that you will please think outside the box. A lot of times people don't want to talk because they were not given mandate to talk. The question is, who actually gave you a mandate? Is it the people or the one person that you think you answer to? We need to be very careful as to who we all responsibilities. And then as we sit here to deliberate, let us think outside the box. How can we ensure synergy from the federal, the state, and the local government level for the good of the ordinary Nigeria? That is our responsibility. I'm sincerely hoping that part of the outcomes of this meeting will be recommendations that we can take up at the Office of the Secretary to Government that we will be able to run with and say, look, if we implement XYZ, we'll be able to make Nigeria a better place for every single Nigeria. The administration has been very strong in the areas of anti-corruption, in the areas of fighting security, which we all know doesn't come to, I mean, ensuring security of life and property, which doesn't come to. Yes, there are still diverse challenges, but I believe that we will have an effective collaboration with local government who will do well to reduce hugely our security challenges. So ladies and gentlemen, like I said earlier, it's not a morning for too long speeches, Rather, I hope that we're able to pull our resources together, think through the issues, really dissect them. I sincerely hope and I believe that the people who are brought here are those that are authorities in these areas so that they will be able to take us through the gamut of issues that we need to discuss such that we can come up with viable recommendations that will help us deal with a better Nigeria. So on behalf of my boss, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, I declare this conference open. Please let's put it.